Setting up cinematic shots in Unreal Engine 5 sucks. Not because they look bad, but because they're such a pain to customize. You get the perfect shot, but then the moment you want to change your angle or move your subject, you're back to keyframing all over again. But recently, I found this new add-on called Black Eye Cameras, and it completely changes how you shoot inside of Unreal Engine 5. Instead of redoing the shots, this add-on makes your camera dynamic. You can basically lock your camera to a subject, and if you move your subject, your camera is going to go with it, and it's always going to keep it in the frame. And today, I really want to show you guys how this add-on works, because honestly, Honestly, for me personally, using this add-on has helped me focus more on the storytelling and cinematography rather than fighting the sequencer trying to get some keyframes right. So without any further ado, let's jump in and I'll show you guys exactly how it works. All right, so before we get started, you're going to have to obviously purchase the add-on first. So you can go to fab.com and just search for Black Eye Camera, or you can just go to the link in the description and you will come to this page after which you can just log in with your Epic Games account and just click buy now. Once that is done, it's going to show up in your library for Unreal Engine um, in your Epic Games launcher. Just click install to engine and it should be good from there. Once that is done, you can just open up Unreal Engine and go to settings right here, click plugins, and then search for Black Eye, and then make sure to enable this. I think it's going to ask you to restart, so just do that, and then you should be good to go. All right, so we are inside Unreal Engine 5, and what we have here is basically a level sequence in which we have a simple walking animation of this character, which we're going to be creating camera animations for. And it's going to be pretty simple, pretty straightforward uh, using black eye cameras. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go up to add right there, and we're going to go to black eye, and then click this black eye simple look at Cinecam. So once you add that, we can basically just go ahead and drag that inside of the level sequence. And then we can click this icon right here to start piloting the camera. And now we can basically move the camera just like you would normally move a Cinecam. But the reason why we're using Black Eye is so that we can, you know, set a custom subject and, you know, keep that in frame at all times. So we're going to select this Black Eye camera right there. And we're going to go down to the details panel and in the details panel you're going to see this follow and the look at option so these options are mainly how you control the black eye cameras let's first start with the look at because uh, i think that's easier to understand then we're going to go to follow so once you select look at you're going to go down to subject 01 this is basically our subject you can also add multiple subjects if you want we're going to do that in just a bit but for now let's just use one subject and we're going to click actor right here and we're going to click this eyedropper tool and basically select our main actor. Once we do that, you're gonna see that our camera is gonna point exactly towards that actor and it's also gonna be in focus. But the problem that you're gonna be noticing right now is the fact that, you know, this whole character is not in focus right now. And the reason for that is because our focal length is a bit too high. So either you can go ahead to go inside your Cinecam and then reduce your current focal length like that. Or what you can do is if I just reset this back to you know, the default value, what I can do is I can go to the look at and here I can go down to enable dynamic field of view. So if I click that, it's automatically going to adjust my field of view to make sure that the entire subject is in our frame. So now if I if I just move my camera, you can see that no matter where I move my camera, it's always going to focus or it's always going to, you know, point towards my character and keep it in the center of the frame. I'm going to turn off dynamic field of view for now because I don't want my focal length to change. But you know, you definitely have that option. What I want to do now is basically I want to focus on the top half of this character. For example, you want to have like a close up shot of the character's face and you know their torso but not their legs right how exactly do you do that because right now our entire character is our subject so the way we do that is by going up to your subject also by the way if you're not seeing this box around your subject you can go to show right here and make sure that black eye cameras is checked and if you're in unreal engine 5.6 or a newer version you're going to see a similar option right there you can click that to access the same setting but back inside black eye cameras we're going to go to this offset setting and you can change this offset setting to basically change your uh, the position that your camera focuses on. So I can just move this up to my character's face and it's always going to be pointing towards your, uh, you know, the top half of your character, which is perfect. Another option that you have is basically specify bone names to focus on. So for example, if you want to, if I just set this back to zero, I can also enter a bone name. So I can just say head and I'm also going to turn off use component bounds, which is going to make it focus on its head. Now you're going to need to know your character's bone names in order to be able to do that. But you know, pretty much every character does have a head bone. And let's say you can also do pelvis. That's going to focus on the pelvis. And another option that you can do is clavicle. So clavicle right or left, you know, you can do that to get like a mid shot. So you can see how easy it is to sort of just frame your shot. You really get the freedom of changing things without having to sort of reframe your shot again and again. So now let's talk about having multiple subjects. So you can definitely add another character and that can be added to the subjects. However, another thing that you can do is basically if I go to multiple subjects and basically in the second subject, if I just close this out, we go to the second subject and we add the same exact character. What that's going to allow us to do is basically focus on two different parts of our body. So for example, let's say one of them can be your pelvis and turn off use component bounds. And the other one can just be your head. So that would what that would do is that would basically 
frame your shot between the head and the pelvis. So it's going to give you a very good shot of your upper half of your body. So you can definitely use that in, you know, many different situations. I'm going to set my offset back to zero. And yeah, I think that shot is looking pretty good. And also I'm just going to move a bit farther and basically increase my focal length so we can make this camera shot look a bit more cinematic. So something like 60 might be good. And now if I move my camera here, it's so easy to like sort of just frame my shot because everything is pretty much done for me. Now I want to show you guys a very, very cool feature that this add-on has, and that is composition. So let's say I don't want this character to be in the center of my frame. I want to use, you know, say the rule of thirds, and I want to keep it on the right hand side, you know, just to make the scene look more, a little more cinematic. So what I can do is I can uh, select my camera again and then go to look at, and then in composition, I can just expand this and it's going to give me all these preset options that I can use to, uh, you know, place my character. So for example, if I said top left, it's going to send it to the top left. And, you know, you can use all these settings, but you can also manually control this. So for example, I want my character to be a little towards the right side, something like that, and maybe a little down as well, something like that. I think that would be the perfect composition. So I can really dial these settings down without any restrictions with this add-on and it makes framing your shots really, really easy. So I think this shot looks really nice. And if I play the animation, you're going to see that it's going to uh, keep looking at the character, keep it in the same exact position as it moves. Uh, the camera is automatically going to adjust itself. But now let's create a follow animation, which is going to make it look very, very cool. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to go to follow and we're going to use the same exact method. So just go to your subject and just click actor and then set it as your actor. And now you can see that the camera position has changed. So now if I just play my animation, you can see that it does look pretty bad. So we're going to fix it in just a bit. But you know, at least it does follow. So at least we know it's working. So the first setting that I want to cover is this follow offset. Uh, so by default, they assume that you know, you're going to be following from 300 uh, units behind, but you can obviously increase that to make your camera go farther, something like that. And then you can obviously, you know, change these settings as well. So basically, whichever side you want to be from, you can use these settings to sort of dial that in. I think something like that might be a good option. And then, you know, we can sort of punch in with our uh, camera focal. And so I'm just going to make it even tighter, something like that, maybe something like 85. Now, if I play the animation, you're going to see it's going to look better. However, one thing that I don't like is the fact that it's really locked onto the character and it's, you know, I think it's looking very janky and very weird. So in order to fix that, what we can do is we can add some location damping. So if I just add like 0.5, location damping in all axes. If I add that, now you're going to see that it's going to look a lot better. It's looking a lot smoother and it's looking a lot better. So this just really smooths out your camera animation. You can even increase this higher if you want, but for our case, 0.5 should be a good position. Now, I think this looks really good and you can, you know, you can see that slight bit of movement in the camera, the vertical movement in the camera, which I think in this case looks really nice. But let's say you want it to be really smooth, like you want the camera to not be affected by your character's vertical movement at all. You want it to be really smooth. You can also do that. It's pretty simple. Just go to look at and then inside your if you go down to subject dead zone, you can increase this. And if I just increase something like that, you can see that we have this this box appearing inside of our subject. If I just increase it to something like that to basically cover some part of my character. Now it's basically going to be completely smooth. You can see our camera is perfectly smooth and is not affected by the char the character's vertical movement at all. This looks really nice. I think this whole animation that we made, just considering the fact that, you know, we made it so easily, pretty mind blowing to me. And you know, the best part is nothing is keyframed. Everything is super dynamic. So let's say I want to move my camera to the front of the character and I want to, you know, take a shot from the front. Um, what I can simply do is I can just create a new viewport. So if you don't know how to create a new viewport, you can just go to window up here and then in viewport, you can just click viewport two and that's going to give you a nice, another viewport. If you're computer is lagging too much, by the way, with two viewports, you can also set this to unlit because in this viewport, we're just going to control the camera. But you see the camera right there. I can simply just click that and then I can move that to change the position of my camera just like that. And it's automatically going to keep my character in the frame at that exact point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move a bit further, something like that. And then I'm just going to move the camera to the front. And we're not going to have to worry about the rotation or anything like that. It's automatically going to do that. We just need to worry about the position and the framing of the shot. So I think that should be good, something like that. Again, this is really where your creativity and your direction is going to shine. Um, and you can also have multiple cameras in your scene. For example, if I want to have, let's say, a shot from the back and a shot from the front, what I can simply do is I can go ahead and right click my black eye camera and go down to edit and duplicate. If I duplicate this, um, then I can drag this in my level sequence as well. And then if I go to this camera by, you know, clicking this icon right there, and now I can just simply move this to the back. So something like that. I think something like that should be good, maybe a little towards the 
this side. So now what I can just simply do is I can click this icon right here to go inside this camera and this icon to basically go inside that camera. So I can just switch these, um, you know, let's say I want the front view first. So that's how it looks. And then I can just click this to go to the back view. And you can use the camera switcher, by the way, which comes inside this plugin to, you know, make this process easier. But we're going to talk about that in just a bit. Um, and you can also use a hybrid approach with this. So for example, you want your camera to also move. You can definitely add a transform track to your camera and the keyframes you add are going to work perfectly fine with these animations. And that's really going to allow you to create a lot of camera movements that are, you know, otherwise really, really hard in Unreal Engine 5. I also want to mention that I am just scratching the surface of what this plugin can do. They have a lot of different features like Shotless, for example, where you can have multiple cameras in your scene and it's automatically going to switch between them when you have the subject in your frame. They also have this other feature called Camera Switcher as well, which is going to let let you switch between cameras really, really easily. And in the description, you're going to find a few links to some tutorials of this add-on. They're made by the creators themselves, and they're going to teach you in depth how to fully take advantage of this add-on. Now, if you decide to make any projects with this, be sure to let me know on Instagram. I'll definitely give you feedback. Link to my Instagram is going to be in the description. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.